Okay, this is going to be a short video to summarize polysaccharides. So plants do photosynthesis, and in the process of photosynthesis, they produce simple sugars. Uh, technically, they're actually making a small three-carbon sugar, but then they'll take two of those, join them together, and form glucose. So glucose is the monosaccharide of plants, of carbohydrates, sorry, uh, and they join together in long chains called polysaccharides. So polysaccharides are a chain of many glucose molecules or glucose monomers. So uh, let's go ahead and see the two functions found in plants for polysaccharides. So plants have two kinds of polysaccharides. They have starch and they have cellulose. Now starch's primary function is for energy storage. This is how a plant is going to store those glucose monosaccharides for a rainy day or a dark night, or some time that they need a source of energy and they're not able to do photosynthesis. Uh, so this is how plants store their energy um, for later. And then they also are able to use glucose monomers to build cell walls for structure and support. So cell walls are made of the polysaccharide called cellulose. And so it offers um, a structure for the plant cell as well as support. It's very rigid and tough. Uh, when we eat it, it ends up being fiber for us. So now let's go ahead and see the difference though in the monomers that build starch and cellulose. So both polysaccharides, I'll just put my face here. Um, both polysaccharides are made of glucose, starch and cellulose. However, starch is made of repeating alpha glucose monosaccharides while cellulose is made of repeating beta glucose monosaccharides. So when we see why this matters, it's because of the bonds. And so when we look at the alpha form, we see that the hydroxyl or OH group is on the bottom uh, of carbon number one. And if we look at cellulose, we see that the hydroxyl or OH group is on the top on carbon number one. And so uh, why this matters, uh, particularly for us as animals, is because uh, when plants build this polysaccharide of starch using alpha glucose monomers uh, to store their energy, um, lucky for us when we eat this starch, we are able to hydrolyze those bonds, holding the alpha glucose monomers together. So when we eat like french fries or rice or some other starch, the enzymes in our saliva um, are hydrolyzing. They are adding a water to break the bonds into individual or like short chain um, carbohydrates. So here, as we hydrolyze starch, uh, this is one way we as animals who eat starch are able to like raise our blood sugar and have a source of energy. Um, so starch can be digested by animals, um, and then we'll use those glucose uh, monomers or glucose monosaccharides uh, as energy for our cells. So when we eat starch, our enzymes break the bonds holding the monosaccharides together, and this raises our blood sugar levels in our body. Now for cellulose though, cellulose is also a polysaccharide made of glucose monomers, or a chain of monosaccharides, uh, so it is a polymer. Uh, however, the glucose here is beta glucose, and therefore, if we try to eat cellulose, um, like we eat some salad or some bell peppers or something that has cellulose as part of it, uh, we are not able to hydrolyze those bonds. We cannot break apart the glucose monomers, the beta glucose monomers. So even though there's lots of potential energy stored here in these glucose monomers, we cannot access them. And this is why when you eat salad or lettuce, um, there's not really any calories associated with it because you can't break the bonds. We can't get the sugar from those cell walls. So um, when we eat cellulose, our enzymes cannot break the bonds holding the monosaccharides together. And then cellulose will travel through our body without being hydrolyzed. Uh, we do not get any energy from cellulose, but we do benefit uh, from the fiber it provides for the bacteria that live inside of our intestines. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and see again. So starch versus cellulose. 
Starch is made of a chain of alpha glucose monomers or alpha glucose monosaccharides. And then cellulose is made of a chain of beta glucose monosaccharides. And this changes the bonds between uh, the monomers. Starch, we're able to hydrolyze, whereas cellulose, we are not able to break apart or digest or hydrolyze. Okay, so now what about in animals, right? Like we rely on uh, blood sugar, so glucose flowing through our bloodstream with our blood cells. Now, this glucose flowing through our body is a nice source of energy for us and uh, makes it readily available for our mitochondria in our cells to break it down and make ATP for a number of body functions. So let's go ahead and see, though, uh, why we would ever need a polysaccharide. So here, the glucose in our blood are monosaccharides, single sugars, and after we eat a meal, let's say we have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, uh, the bread is starch, that will be hydrolyzed, the jelly has sugar, um, and fructose, fruit sugar. When we eat fructose or high fructose corn syrup, our liver will actually turn it into glucose for us. Now, uh, so after a meal, our blood sugar rises. Now, sugar is a source of energy. Carbs are a source of energy, and energy is critical for survival. And so therefore, anytime we take in energy, we're either gonna use it or we're gonna try and save it uh, for times when we don't have access to food. Now, in modern society, we have grocery stores and refrigerators, but think of humans or animals in the wild, like as hunter-gatherers or just an animal, like a squirrel, I don't know. Um, uh, you never know what your next food is gonna show up or the next uh, berry bush you're gonna be able to find. So what we're able to do is we have our liver as a nice like storage area for our glucose, for our sugar. So we'll take our, use our liver and our muscles as a place to store excess sugar. So um, we'll talk about insulin in a different unit, but insulin is basically gonna communicate with our liver and our muscle cells, and it's going to allow sugar to be removed from the bloodstream. So basically it's gonna go from like a high concentration in our bloodstream into our liver and our muscle cells, and it's gonna form a polysaccharide. It's gonna be stored as a chain. Uh, that actually has some branches coming off too. It's not just a straight chain, but um, a bunch of branches and things. And so here, uh, this polysaccharide is called glycogen. Now the purpose of glycogen is an energy storage polysaccharide in animals. So it's like the animal version of starch, basically. Uh, we store about 24 hours worth of this glucose as glycogen within our liver. So you could go for about a day and still have uh, glucose uh, providing energy for your cells. So uh, let's say that you exercise. Let's say I go for a run. Um, my blood sugar that's flowing through my body will power my muscles. However, if my blood sugar levels drop, because I'm using up that sugar, I need to replace it so that my blood can stay at homeostasis and at even blood sugar levels. So what we noticed here with the glycogen, the polysaccharide in our liver, is when our blood sugar levels drop, the hormone glucagon is gonna signal the cell to hydrolyze or break the bonds between each glucose monomer so we can have um, our blood sugar raise back up rise back up, I don't know, back to homeostasis so we can continue to exercise and use that energy um, flowing in our blood. So our three polysaccharides that we talked about, we have starch in plants for energy storage. We have cellulose in plants for cell wall and structure. Uh, and then we have glycogen in animals that we use as an energy storage polysaccharide as well. One I did not talk about in this video is chitin. C-H-I-T-I-N. Chitin is used in the exoskeleton of animals like crabs and lobsters and roly-polies. So chitin is also a fourth polysaccharide, not really discussed here, um, and but it is made of a chain of glucose uh, monosaccharides. All right, great job, my wonderful students.